Okay, so here's the uh, <coughs> here's a C515. I'm building this for the last three or four days, so we're ready to start painting now. I've added the uh, clear parts, given them a spray of interior green. You can see I've masked off um, all of the uh, all of the cockpit area uh, here. Uh, the only thing I need to do is uh, add some masking uh, just inside of the uh, just inside of the radiators intakes here because there's uh, some radiator matrixes that have been already painted. So I'm going to use a couple of little bits of, um, of foam for this. So just going to cut some off like so. Finding some, uh, yeah, that's more or less big enough. It's just a case of showing that in to uh, protect protect the radiator faces. Okay, and that's that done. So uh, now <coughs> I'm going to be using Mr. Colour for this. So the base coat for the underside of the sea fire is obviously going to be um, Sky. This is quite an old pot and has been so heavily mixed in the past that it's actually more or less thin enough to uh, spray straight from the pot. So I've got my airbrush uh, on. We're in a good, uh, a goodly whack of that, and just see how it. And that's actually spraying quite thickly, which I'm not actually worried about. I'm going to go with the thick paint at the moment because what I'm going to do once I've got one quick coat on. like this is I will thin it back significantly and give it another quick coat over the top to um, to blend it all in. The beauty of uh, Mr. Colour Paints is if you apply a second really heavily thinned coat it more or less melts into the first coat and gives you a beautifully smooth finish. You can probably also see some spiders webs of paint forming here um, that's what happens when you're spraying thick Mr. Colour at reasonably high pressure. It dries so quickly that it forms spider's webs. Again, it's not something I worry about because the second uh, really heavily thinned coat will just act on that and melt it into the uh, overall finish. So I know some people panic about those spider webs, but in over a decade of using Mr. Colour, I can honestly say I've never really had a problem with it. Uh, or at least not a problem with dealing with it.
so I'm, I'm almost making sure I've got lots of these spider webs on here to show you how easy it is to deal um, with this on the finished uh, thing. So uh, stay with me and don't panic. Okay, so as you can see, there's the uh, there's the first initial coat. Uh, the good thing about Mr. Color is it's really quite dense, so that's given me a, quite a good coverage um, for that one quick coat. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a really really good a goodly amount of uh, Mr. Color leveling thinner. Okay, doing that, thinning it right back and um, quickly back flush my uh, airbrush. Okay, now what I've got is a really thin mixture coming through. It's going on there very, uh, I hope you can see how wet that is actually. going on there. Okay, crunchy. I just yanked on the airbrush when it was um, the cave, the uh, air hose was trapped, so it's just <laughs> made me spill some. Um, Okay, that is the underside of my sea fire, <laughs> well and truly painted sky. So you can see that with Mr. Colour Paint, it really is the work of uh, minutes to get good coverage. 
Now what I want to do is obviously this isn't the finished job. I need to uh, I need to be looking at weathering this back. So what I want to do is mix some white in uh, with with the paint. So I'll just put the airbrush here a second. Move that out of the way, and I need to find one of my many many pots of white. There you go. There's. Well, this is uh, Guns uh, 316, uh, which is uh, Mr. Colour 17875. It's the white that they use or recommend for uh, the underside of US Navy aircraft. Another beauty of Mr. Colour, stuff that you don't want, you can just pour straight back into the pot. It doesn't affect it like it would with enamels or um, some other acrylics or similar. Okay, so what I'm going to do is add some... Uh, I have plenty of white to this to really, I really really want it lightened up quite significantly for the weathering job. Maybe just move that off to one side. Uh, plenty of thinners. Okay, I'm just going to back flush to uh, get it Okay, so what, what I now want to do is I want to add a sort of faded pattern to, uh, to my sky. So what I do is take it a panel at a time, okay, and just do a backwards and forwards in one direction, like so, and then backwards and forwards in the other direction. And what that does is it builds up a kind of a really neat cloud pattern. On the, uh, on the surface of the model. But the important thing is to do it a panel at a time rather than um, just over the whole model in one go. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but I'm starting to build up a, a really nice faded effect on um, individual panels. This is just this is one step of the uh, weathering process.
really starting to uh, Notice how often I've had to clear out the clogs in the airbrush on this using Mr. Colour? Yeah, never. Uh, basically, I wouldn't say this paint is clog proof because I, it, it can clog if you, uh, if you get it wrong, but it's certainly far more resistant to clogging than any of the uh, acrylics or enamels I've used. Okay, so that's the uh, initial painting done. Okay, and as you can see, that's that's been about ten minutes work now. Um, so what I'm now going to do, now obviously, I don't want to put this mixture back into this pot because it's already been tinted. So this mixture really does have to go. So I'm just going to throw that. Into um, into a waste receptacle, for want of a better description, and uh, give my airbrush a very very quick uh, spray through with some cellulose thinner just to clear the uh, bulk of that out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat that process now. Uh, that, that kind of weathering process you see but this time it's going to be with um, a slightly darker variation of the base colour so I'm just going to add a couple of brushfuls of the darker of the original sky and then we need to find a paint that's slightly that will just darken it down a little bit so what I'm going to use in this instance is a little bit of um, interior grey green which will just darken which will just darken my base colour down a bit again I'm going to thin it back so it's about probably 80% thinner again looking at a back flush just to see Yeah, and I'm happy with how that's flowing. So now, I'm just going to do... I'm just going to do exactly the same. Over every individual panel. on the underside just with my darker mix.
So what I've done there, if you see, I've just gone over the whole wing in one direction, a panel at a time. And now, Going over in the other direction. Okay, that's my um, that's my underside sky. That's my underside sky colour done. Um, I don't know how well that's showing up on the uh, on the video. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that, but um, you know that's my first base colour applied. Again that's a darker version of the original colour so I don't want that going back into the colour cup either so uh, let's clean my uh, airbrush out of Mr. Colour. Mr. Colour also cleans out of airbrushes very very easily. Um, I've never had any particular gumming up problems or anything from uh, any of my airbrushes using Mr. Colour. So there you are, there's my uh, underside painted. And you know within about 25, within about, well 15-20 minutes I'll be able to start masking to apply the top side uh, colour, should I so desire. Well as the writing says people, um, if you want to see more of uh, my work go to www.drewmanton.com and uh, all my projects are up there. Thank you.